Infinity has had a bit of an identity crisis over the past year with a wholesale change in the way they name their products. Gone is the JX crossover. Now it's called the QX60, and the G37 sedan has been replaced with this Q50 sedan. Q signifies cars, and QX signifies crossovers or SUVs. Clear, right? Well, it might take a while to get used to the new naming structure, but keep in mind it's the same quality products that are front and center. Infinity has big plans for the brand, taking direct aim at some of the already established names like BMW and Mercedes-Benz. The outgoing G37 was already a very worthy on-road performer, but a bit too simplistic on the inside. Now, Infinity has taken things up a notch with the Q50 adding a dynamic look, sumptuous interior, and class-leading technology. The front end of the Infiniti Q50 is aggressive looking and has more than a passing resemblance to the new Lexus IS. The back of the car is a little bit more flowing and elegant looking. The main competitor for this car probably is the Lexus IS, but Infiniti would like BMW, Audi, and Mercedes owners to consider their new car. Sold as a base model, sport trim, all-wheel drive, premium, and even a hybrid, there's a broad market for this sedan. Starting at $37,500 and ramping up to the all-wheel drive sport model at $49,950, there is a substantial discount with the Q50 when you compare it to similarly equipped BMWs. The base model comes with 17-inch wheels, but most of the higher trim levels are equipped with 19-inch wheels. The car seen here is the all-wheel drive premium model starting at $43,400. One thing that Infinity is incredibly passionate about is interior design. They're really hoping to create an incredibly high standard and then share it with their entire vehicle lineup. Everything from the way the buttons and dials feel to even the sound that the doors make when they close, those are all things that they're hoping to standardize. This new Q50 is the latest showcase of this approach. The center console is very attractive with two screens, one placed for radio functions and the second for the navigation and backup camera. The way the lower screen is incorporated is first rate. It looks like a high quality iPad that sits flush with the dash, while the other screen is recessed for easier use in bright light. The only problem with the system is that it takes time to boot up when you start the car. This is one area that can hopefully be updated with software. I think most people will probably buy the sports package that starts at about 47.5, or they'll jump into this premium trim if they want to get heated leather seats, Bose stereo, backup camera with around view cameras, and power tilt and telescopic steering, just to name a few additional features. Most of the German compact luxury sedans are using a turbo four cylinder engine as their base power plant. Now this Q50 has decided to break that trend by sticking with their 3.7 liter V6 that they used in the previous G37. It's a powerful and smooth engine and has 328 horsepower. The transmission is a seven speed automatic that puts the power to either the rear wheels or all wheels, depending on the trim selected. Most Canadians will opt for the all-wheel drive model, which is a good choice due to the higher level of interior amenities. The suspension has been updated compared to the old G37, with a reconfigured rear end to deliver a more dynamic ride. Now, if you want to crank things up a notch, the Sport model gets a more aggressive suspension and bigger wheels, but the ride can be a bit choppy in city driving. I really like how customizable this car is. You can personalize the driving feel by changing the steering ratio and input, so it's casual and light or quick and heavy. You can even adjust the drive mode from sport to eco. There really is something here for everybody in every style of driving. Now I agree with Lacey. I prefer this premium trim over the sport model. It definitely is smoother. The sport model can be choppy. Doesn't matter which one you get, they all come with that beautiful, smooth and powerful six-cylinder engine that has way more power than most of the competition. What makes this car unique is the fact it's the very first model to have an optional steer-by-wire system. Don't worry, there is a mechanical backup, and it's called direct adaptive steering. This system is optional on the all-wheel drive models and sport versions of the Q50. 
There have been many auto reviewers that don't like this system, claiming it to be vague and numb, and I have to disagree. I think it's much better than many of the adjustable steering setups from companies like Audi that really do feel disconnected. In contrast, the Q50 feels like an extension of the driver, moving through corners with ease and comfort with just the slightest movement of the steering wheel. This right now is my favorite compact luxury sedan. So Zach, what do you think of the new Q50? Well, I think this might be my new favorite in the compact luxury category. This car's got a lot going for it. Styling on the outside, wonderful looking dash on the inside. But for me, it always comes back to the drive. 328 horsepower, it's got a wonderful platform, it handles well, it's got that fantastic adaptive steering, and it costs less than much of the competition. But there's one negative. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what it is now. I'm gonna wait and see if you have the exact same one. So what do you think of this car? You know, Zach, I agree with you. I absolutely love this car. And you touched on a lot of things I like. The exterior styling, especially the front end. Inside it looks gorgeous. All of the seats are comfortable and there's plenty of space for all people inside the vehicle. And you know what? I really like a lot of the gadgets and the apps that are available. A little overwhelming at first, but I think it's pretty cool that you can do all the stuff with a car, but that's actually what brings me to my one dislike. Let me, let me guess, let me guess. You start the car and you wait and you wait and you timed how long it yes. took for the computer to boot up. It actually took 26 seconds and that doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're actually sitting there waiting to use the radio, it takes forever. Yeah, and hopefully they can do a flash update to the computer system and make it a little bit quicker, but that really is the Achilles heel of this car so far. Otherwise, I love it. Looking for a luxury car? All the reviews are available at drivingtelevision.com.